Welcome to your Farm and Home Show. My name is Joanna Coles, and this morning we're visiting with Dr. Ellen Crocker. She's with the University of Kentucky Extension Forest Health Specialist there. We're going to talk a little bit about an insect that we've mm -hmm. kind of been on the watch for for a while, right? For sure. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody wants to see this insect, the spotted lanternfly. Um, I feel like this insect has gotten a lot of attention because when it arrives, after it invades, it covers the surfaces of things, so many of them. Not only are they kind of gross and disturbing just to have so many of these insects, but then they excrete this sugary honeydew that will get on things, and that gets covered with black sooty mold and covers everything. So a gross new invasive insect that we do not want um, in the landscape setting, in orchards and vineyards, something that can be a real problem as well. Yes, and it has been confirmed in Kentucky, so we know that it's in Kentucky, and so we probably just kind of need to watch for it. Definitely, and um, something that people know about the spotted lanternfly is that while it can feed on a lot of different plants, there's one plant in particular that it really likes. And not only do you not want that plant because it's the favorite host of the spotted lanternfly, you don't want that plant because it's an invasive plant that is a huge problem on its own, and that's the tree of heaven. Don't be confused by the name. <laughs> it sounds really nice. You don't want this tree. Uh, it will take over, um, has lots of seeds that will spread into especially disturbed areas and form dense thickets where other things can't get in. Um, so not only should you be managing Tree of Heaven because it's a bad species um, on its own, but if you don't want to get a lot of spotted lanternfly, it's a good idea to control the tree of heaven around. I see them a lot on roadsides, um, disturbed kind of higher light environments, but you can also find them moving into woods. Um, I think that's one of the places where it's a biggest threat is let's say you just had a harvest. Um, let's say you had some disturbance in your woods. And if some of those seeds get in, which have these little papery sheaths that will let it spread on the wind, um, they can establish really fast. They can outcompete the native species you might want to see instead. Now, I think of it a lot in the woods because of the damage it can do there, but it is super common lining our roads, lining our rail lines, and um, it can grow just about anywhere. You can see it growing out of a crack in the sidewalk. Um, so you'll see it a lot in kind of more landscape settings, especially uh, uh, degraded soils. It's a fast grower, so that's one thing to look for. And it has these really large leaves that are made up of smaller leaflets. Um, so one of those very long, it almost looks like walnut or sumac, something like that. And at the base of each of those leaflets has a little lobe. Um, in the summertime, it sticks out because when it produces seeds, the flowers don't look like much, but the seeds have this bright pink or yellow neon green color. Um, so you can see them really well at that time of the year. The other way to guarantee if it's tree of heaven or not is to break a stem and smell it. It smells terrible. So it smells like burnt peanut butter or like rancid oil or something like that. It's a really gross smell that I think is very useful in confirming, yep, that's tree of heaven. There are a lot of different ways to control it and it kind of depends on what the situation is like. Are you trying to control lots of trees in a field or is it just you know one or two larger trees? You definitely don't want to leave those larger trees, if they're producing seed, they can move into other areas. So prioritizing those big seed producers is key. Um, with that, for Tree of Heaven, a lot of the most common approaches would be things like a hack and squirt, where you are using a systemic herbicide that's going to kill that tree, but also kill its root system. Because another thing about Tree of Heaven is that while it looks like one tree, it's actually connected to lots of others through that root system. Mm -hmm. So approaches that let you not just kill that one shoot, but everything else in that root system is key. If you just cut down the tree, you're going to get 10 times as many tree of heaven coming up. For those smaller trees, um, when they're just getting established as seedlings, you can definitely pull them up, um, especially on a wet day if the soil is a little bit moist um, or foliar herbicide applications for larger areas. And the sooner you can do that, the better. Um, while getting rid of your tree of heaven is not going to stop spotted lanternfly, 
research has shown that it might be able to reduce how much thought or lantern fly you have in the future. So while any time's a good time to manage Tree of Heaven, right now is an especially good time. Thanks for watching and have a great day.